I incidentally. Mark my words, that's again, no prophecy, simple fact. What we have to do, we the people, yeah, we the people. have to speak up and stop our government from allowing the central bank to issue our currency. It truly is that simple. It truly is. That's all we have to do. Now there's a thing called the hundredth monkey effect. Yes, I've heard the, of that. This is part of the esoteric knowledge that these guys have, and I will move on shortly and, and take this elsewhere. But the hundredth monkey effect has been observed where, you know, the, if something is, in, if a certain piece of knowledge is imparted to one part of the population, once it reaches a certain level, strangely, the entire population becomes aware of it, mm -hmm. almost psychically. Mm -hmm. It's like there's a resonance at work mm -hmm. between the minds in the population. That indeed is very true. The great secret behind this esoteric knowledge is resonance, um, which we will come back to. So, the hundredth monkey effect can be triggered among the people in this country by waking up to that very simple fact that in this analogy you the central bank just go we, what we'll actually do we don't want to hurt you even though you've hurt us dreadfully mm -hmm. and actually plan to do so even more but we don't want to hurt you we'll give you an amnesty you can go you can keep your profits but go all right we will set up our own central bank that's what I and many others are proposing at this point in time, to avoid the forthcoming revolution, for want of a better word. This is a fact, and it will get to the point where there is a revolution. Now. Do you really think so? I, it's happening now. Mm. It, God forbid it should ever become violent, because that is exactly what these people want. The day it becomes violent, they will have the police and the army on the streets, and we will effectively have a police state. I think we're getting <coughs> that way now. Well, Dare I say, this is part of the plan. Um, we have a, a, an increasing union, we have the European Union, um, the American Union, which is going on behind the backs of all the American public, uh, we have the African Union, and so on and so forth. And the, the plan is to merge them into one global union, with one central bank, one national anthem, for want of a better word, one currency, and so on. As if we haven't all seen this taking place behind the scenes here with Europe, for example. Um, that's where it's all leading to. They are aware, I can assure you, that the public will and are waking up to this and that there will be a, an uprising, a popular uprising against them. That's why our civil rights have been removed. Everybody is aware of this and if you're not aware of it, make yourself aware of it because the time is rapidly approaching where they will trigger an event in this country which enables them to take control and initiate the police state, the laws for which have all been passed already. Mm. Uh, God forbid, a huge terrorist attack in this country, which I think we all suspect is going to happen well, anyway, we've already had will be enough for it to happen. They declare the state of emergency and suddenly we have the police state that they have been planning. Um, I might sound paranoid, but people like me will be the first Not ones hauled in. Um, in fact, these lists already exist, but that is another issue. In some pathetic way, people like myself are being viewed as an enemy of the state. That's nonsense. I, I love my country, not in any sort of nationalistic way. I love my country, I love the people in it, I love other countries too. Europe, I love you all. Everybody should love everyone. What we don't need is these politicians getting in and stirring up nationalistic fervour. That's exactly what they're trying to create. The time must come, and it must come soon. And that, if anything, is my clarion call to anyone who's watching this. Don't go out there and do anything about it. Just wise up to what's going on. And when the time comes, you know which side to stand up for. Um, it must never be violent, it must always be peaceful. I quite agree. Uh, there are too many people out there who are angry and shouting and protesting at what they call the New World Order. Mm. Um, and that's great, as, as long as that's all that they do. But we all know they will be driven into, shall we say, furthering things. Just, just For example, the anti-war riots in London. They weren't riots, that was a peaceful anti-war campaign. and. I and others actually observed 
people coming out of our, dare I say, military intelligence headquarters. They were tracked coming out of that building, walking into the crowds and nutting policemen to cause violence. Of course, the press then say, all of these protesters, it's all violence, they're anti-capitalist, they're this, that and the other. And the public sit back and go... Well, once upon a time, didn't we used to have generals which caused problems in football matches? Of course. And now it's kind of switching to the generals of yes. causing problems in peaceful protests. Yes. So it's then it can be reported that, oh, well, they're all a bunch of troublemakers anyway. Yes. It's, it's all getting Another a bit passion. too... It's yeah. all a bit too heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do need to lighten up. I mean, my catchphrase for what I'm doing is good times. That's what we need. They did exist before and we can bring them back. It is unfortunate that the plans literally are to create, um, what we call, could call it a Nazi state. Um, Recently I asked someone, when did you think that we kind of went down the rabbit hole and things started to go wrong? And I'd kind of like to ask you the same question. Right. When did we lose, start to lose our, our freedom, our, our, our England as it was? To want well, to ironically, down? it was the day we, we saved it um, in recent history. Well, not England, but Great yeah. Britain, I should say. It, yes, uh, it, it was the day that we, we saved Great Britain after the Second World War. Uh, the, the Nazis at the time were on record as saying that we never need to create another war to bring about our unified Europe under one central flag and bank and mm. so on. Uh, what we can do is do it through the economic system. Absolutely. That's actually what they did. That now, is a huge way to control people, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Because money is, <laughs> is at the root of everything. Of, of course it is. And um, it's no coincidence, for example, that uh, Werner von Braun Hitler's chief rocket scientist obviously went to America mm -hmm. and headed NASA until scarily recently, into the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, okay, some people say, well, he was a reformed Nazi. I wonder if the other many hundreds of scientists and politicians, for want of a better word, and, and other people who were taken over to America under what was called Operation Paperclip, now a matter of accepted history, mm -hmm. um, now, I wonder if they were all reformed as well. One could be forgiven for suggesting that the Third Reich actually moved to America. Mm. Um, right at the time, for example, that Prescott Bush was... Uh, he, let's face it, he was financing them anyway, as a matter of record. It's, it's about putting the pieces together, but not in a paranoid fashion. This is so clear to anybody who looks that they really need to start taking notice because What's happening now, literally, is the final coup d'etat against their last enemy. And their last enemy is me and you. We the people. And we the people. Um, but we the people have got to start and shout very loud now. We do. We okay. do have to shout very loudly but very lovingly. Yes. These people, they cannot hurt us if, if we don't do anything to initiate that hurt. Damn it, they've hurt us enough. This is the cause of poverty. There's no reason at all why any child in this country should be starving or anyone should be in poverty. And if any politician out there or economist wants to challenge me on that, then please come on camera and we'll do it. That's a challenge that I and many others are putting forward and nobody can do it. We can have a healthy, stable economy and we can remove <coughs> inflation forever we can actually remove taxation also because it is not needed. And that's proven by the fact that everything that's being paid is actually going to pay the loans back to the central banks anyway. It's not paying for anything except that. So we don't need taxation. But imagine what good that money could be used for if we still kept taxation and actually spent it on the National Health Service or whatever. Imagine the changes that could be made. Oh, Can you guess big. how long it would take to change this, by the way? Seven years at the outside. Seven years. How long have we suffered the governments that we've had? We can do this in seven years. Now, if I may, as if this isn't profound enough, well, <laughs> I'd like to move on to the esoteric knowledge that these people actually possess at the very top. I have suggested that it's thousands of years old, mm -hmm. and indeed, it is. Where does it come from? Well, they themselves, if they could sit here now and tell you, they would say 
that it comes from the progenitors of mankind. It comes from the alien race that landed on Earth thousands of years ago and seeded humanity. Now, am I insane for saying that? Because that's what your leaders believe, okay? And if you actually research it, then that is exactly what you will find. There's not a, a global religion that doesn't actually claim that anyway. Um, there is not an esoteric school that doesn't actually claim that. It's written throughout history. I know, I've just done a program recently on uh, UFOs and the history of, and it actually goes, as you say, it goes back thousands of years. Yeah. And people don't realise how far they think it's no. kind of kicked off since the Roswell incident. That's it. <laughs> it goes back a long way. What I'd like to do, and this is such a huge subject that it's not possible in this way. I think we'll have to come back and yeah. do another one on that I know. <laughs> but, this knowledge is it is a cosmology it's an entire science and cosmology of the origins of humanity its place in the universe the physics of the universe oh and this this is one that i've had fun with with physics professors over the years um for example a guy called maxwell discovered electricity i think anyone in the know knows that actually it was nikolai tesla who discovered electricity but maxwell at the same time roughly came up with the equations which allow us, and since that time, to use electricity and imagine how that's changed the world. Well, Maxwell's equations were written in what was called Quaternion Mathematics. He actually allowed, um, it's a hard thing to explain in very simple terms, but those equations actually allow for the free generation of electricity. We do, for example, we never needed to burn fossil fuels ever mm. to create electricity. It can create, be created from zero point, as the physicists call it. I keep hearing this zero point at the moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, well, me it, 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 it's not surprising because, you know, the physics of this and the science and the technology that springs from it is so far in advance of anything that we are currently aware of. Mm. Um, but it's because these equations were sort of suppressed. I mean, the, Maxwell's equations were abbreviated by a guy called Heaviside. And it's the Heaviside equations that are used in science and technology. If you care to go back and look at Maxwell's, mm -hmm. you'll see that they actually unify physics and chemistry and just about every other knowledge. What about Einstein, people say? Well, Einstein, E equals mc squared. Fantastic. Look at the full equation. It has the same quaternion elements in it okay. as Maxwell's did. Um, again, what, what I'm suggesting, or telling you, it is actually a matter of record, the industrial, military, financial um, complex just suppressed these things. And, and for a few generations, people were, st were kicking up a stink about it, saying, well, hang on, uh, what's going on here? The, these are the equations, not these. But as these professors lost their jobs or disappeared or whatever actually happened to them, a couple of generations down the line, everyone had sort of forgotten about that. What was being taught in universities were the abbreviated versions. I can assure you that behind the scenes, the military cabal had been working on what that technology literally brings. And, and we are talking about anti-gravitational um, anti forces, mm. even trans-dimensional. These are trans-dimensional physics equations, um, which yeah. literally means yeah. traveling through the dimensions. Bringing well, I personally believe that the science that we see in our everyday lives, that we're allowed to see, mm -hmm. is literally the tip of the iceberg. Oh, it is. And there's a whole lot going on underneath. It is. And do you know what? I mean, I'm sat here now <laughs> thinking people will be watching this and thinking, oh, he's at it again. <laughs> but I, I, I challenge anybody to tell me that I'm wrong in, a, in any way. Or I pick on the detail, but the, what I'm saying is a fact. This ain't new to me. I stumbled across this years ago when I was doing my research into natural sciences. Um, the natural sciences fascinated me. Number theory, mathematics. And I won't go into that, um, but could do at some point. The greatest unsolved problems in mathematics were solved a long time ago. Mm. They are known, or certainly some of them. Um.